Welcome to jobskillshare.org. In this video, we are going to work hands on on something that you might be also working on when you get routers and switches, and maybe you're stuck in this scenario. So, what is the scenario here? First of all, let me explain. This is a learning lab, so there's going to be a little talking, okay? So, first of all, it can help people who are taking the help desk course, the help desk lab course. Now, remember, we said that you don't work on routers and switches to configure them, but at the same time, you might be working on something like, you know, getting on to the switch or maybe the router not usually routers but switch maybe you need to find out this computer mac address on this router and you you need to know well, where is it connected is it up or down things like that maybe basic stuff and you need to know how to connect to the switch but now you're wondering since you're you're brand new to IT you're thinking how did i now i started working in this lab on on basic stuff like software installations and working with the users imaging and stuff but how did this happen how did this whole thing happen so this can give you a, a good image in your head so this is not a, actually a lab for you but you will learn something you know how did you even get to this point and then you start working on other things so you have a good image this this lab can also help people that are working on their home computer so you have let's say let's say for example you have a let's say you have a a Netgear Wi-Fi router or something at your home that's connected and now what you want to do is you want to connect this Ethernet connected that Ethernet to your router right here which is a Cisco router and you have a switch you want to give a connection to this router so then the switch can get connection and then your computers can uh, get a internet connection in this lab your your router Wi-Fi router we're not going to touch that it's going to be our zero zero right here so you basically take that wire plug it into your router put it into zero now remember I'm gonna be using like you know un uh, you know what is what do you call non Cisco language here okay just to give you things explain things you know way better things I've seen a lot of people using a lot of port and gigabit all that kind of stuff really if you are trying to learn things let's just talk about the image in your head first then later on you can go into details and learn the real Cisco stuff but at this point zero zero that's your Ethernet coming from Netgear you plugged it in you're doing nothing you have not done nothing on your Netgear that's an IP address from DHCP you just got that IP address forget about this then this guy right here you need to plug this in to your plug this Ethernet in go back to your go back to your switch and plug it in right here you can see it's already down that's administratively down so even though my router is up but that's not working you need to configure that now that's what's happened in in a real world environment that IP that zero zero that I just showed you this could be coming from your service provider internet service provider AT&T or anyone else gave you the IP address and then you're doing all the subnetting and all that, and that kind of stuff and then you basically plug it in here and you do play around with all your networking that's why I said it's not a it's not a lab for help this guys but it's gonna give you a really good image how things are working going back to the lab forget about this what we are doing right now we have a building here we got a IP address from our service providers. They, they set up their route, the, their stuff in there. They gave us the link. Now my job is to uh, connect the router, the switch, and give this server a connectivity, or maybe any other computers that can directly connect to the switch and should have an internet connection. Now let's go to this computer. This is one that I set up. So if I go to my networking right here, and I click on it, and I go to adapters. I see I have two adapters. This one is coming directly from my Netgear. So this is getting at that IP address. To find that IP address, we would need to go into CMD, IP config. You see it's getting that address 192.168. Now what if I just disable this and turn this guy on? This adapter is connected directly right here. You can see the light just went the amber light and now it's gonna get green so after get green it should get an IP address but I haven't done anything on this switch so it's not going to get anything good it's just gonna get a bogus IP which is not gonna do any good for me so that's what your job in this lab is to connect everything so you can get to the internet so if I try to go to the same page it's spinning right now it's not going to work and if I go back 
to my adapter right here, it's still identifying. Even though it says it's connected now, it's still saying identifying and the light went green. Things look good, but still it's not doing anything good for us. So let's do IP config. You see I got that 169.254, that's not a real IP address. So let's change everything so our switch can get the connection from the router through your net gear. You're going to get the connection from here to here and we should be able to get to the internet. I just started my router like I say this is a fresh router out of the box and if you want to know how I connected this I will put a different link I have that video so right now I'm waiting for it to come up the first message you will see is something like that you'll just click no or end sorry about that so then you click enter and now we need to get into the router there you go so you just type EN that's gonna give you the little bit more access administrative mode then we need to go to configuration mode config T so now we're in configuration mode the first interface we need to work on is that 00 remember it's connected to your Netgear and we just need to get an IP address so we need to do is INTG0 slash 0 and we're going to click enter so you go you see that it says config if now what we need to do is we need to do is no shutdown so it's going to be up meaning we're telling this interface to get up get the IP address uh, so it's no shutdown and now we need to get the IP address so right now it's up it says right there to get the IP address what we need to do is to type IP address and remember I'm using the the tabs so right now we're telling that 00 to go get the IP address from the Netgear and then we will forget about this interface so you can see it's assigned 169 address you can test other things like you can do do ping and if there is another IP address in your same network you can do that or you can use another outside network like you know DNS for Google stuff like that so 192.168.1.167 is another machine that I have in my network. I'm going to ping that. So it is getting a ping. So another one you can try is do ping 8. It's a Google DNS, open DNS server. So you can see right here it's success. So that's good. We configured our first interface. Now what we need to do is we will do a configuration for the another interface. Now 0 slash 1 is the interface that we are directly um, then connected to the switch and then that's how the switch is going to get all the information from that 0 slash 1 and that's what we need to configure right now. So let's go ahead intg 0 slash 1 so we need to configure it with the DHCP so what we're gonna do right now is we need to give it an IP address so here uh, in this section this is where it's gonna get tricky that you need to know about IP addresses like I said I'm not gonna do that so just follow the directions here and I'm going to explain just a little bit to kind of make it a little bit different so in this case I'm going to use 192.168.1.167 one now why did I use this because I already have 1.1 um, network in my you know the adapter that I showed in the first video so it's gonna get confusing that so what we need to get from this switch right now we'll tell the switch that anyone that connects to the switch needs to get an address from dot two so dot two thirteen dot two fourteen whatever it is it's going to assign that address and now what we need to do is to give it a subnet mask which is two fifty five that 255 255.0 so then what we need to do is to get this also a no shutdown command so this should it should be up and now what we need to do is to assign a DHCP pool so anyone that connects they're gonna get these IP addresses so what we need to do is to type here um, IP DHCP and we're going to say pool
Actually, we need to exit from here. This is in the config, so we need to exit. So, oh, why is it not working? All right, so now what we need to do is to do an IP DSCP. It should work now. So if you do pool, do tab. See, the tabs work. That means it's working. If your tab is not working, that means you're in a different um, section. So what we need to do is we need to do an IP address, which is the... First, we need to give it a name. So let's give it a name like lab user. So there you go. Now we need to give it a network address. So the network address is 192.168.2.0 slash 24. Okay. And now what we need to do is the default router is going to be our 192.168. Dot two dot one okay and now we're going to give it a DNS server you can give a DNS server if you have one in your house but most of us won't have it so let's just give it a DNS server is going to be uh, eight dot eight dot eight that's the Google DNS server and we're going to click on enter and exit so at this point we got a lot of things configured so now we are going to do an IP route again you can use the tab to make sure that RTE route you see and we need to give it a 0, .0, .0, 0, .0, 0.0.0.0 0 .0 and 0, .0, .0, .0 and here we are going to give the gateway of our network meaning the net gear that you have the Wi-Fi network that you have so most of you probably will have something like this 192.168. I'm typing with one hand right here so here it is now for you to check this you can go to your internet and type this you should get a login admin like you know some kind of login from your Netgear if you're using some other device make sure you know that address you go to that address or you can do IP config slash all and that will also show you your default gateway so let's say this computer is already on that Netgear connection so I'm gonna do IP config slash all even if I do just IP config, that should work. You can see right here, my default gateway is right here. That. Okay? So that's, uh, and my screen is messed up, but that's the one. So if you do enter, and if you do ping, so let's say do ping the same IP address, 192.168.1.1. 1 then I'm getting a success right there. That, so far we're moving along the right directions now what we need to do is we need to basically configure our NAT uh, inside and NAT outside now of course I'm not going to explain what NAT is but this is kinda like how it gets the it, the IP address is working and that's how you're gonna get internet from the other machine uh, you can google what is NAT, Cisco NAT what you can google what is PAT, PAT and NAT Again, I'm not going to go into that because the video is going to be really, really long. Then. So now, what we need to do is to configure our 0.0. .0. Um, so let's go to interface 0 slash 0. And we are going to make this an outside. And you can do it outside. You see, right now I'm doing another mistake. And the reason it's not doing it is because we need to get into the interface first before we even type that so we do this right so now you see config config if and it's a very common mistake that people will make because you forget where you are um, because I'm doing like two things at the same time so now we are in the zero zero and we need to make that IP if you do that tab now watch if I do NAT and tab and it's working so if I do out outside it's just do that so that tells you that everything is good so our outside is set up so let's exit from here and we need to configure the inside so to configure the inside we'll do int and interface 0 slash 1 now that's the one that we need to configure for our switch right so 0 slash 1 and we need to do is IP 
IP net slash inside and we're going to click enter and that's it now what we need to do is exit from here and we need to do an access list so IP I'm going to access access list right there standard Just type that standard one and you see it's in a different section and we'll do permit any and we will exit from here and the one last thing we need to do we need to do IP net inside and you can do the tab again to make sure you're cor typing correctly source one and we're gonna make it the zero slash zero overload so interface like I said oh we need to give a before we do source one we need to do list one and then now we need to do interface if I do tab it should work g0 slash one and we'll do or load and enter and now I can exit from here that's it guys so now if I go to my switch you see this is my switch right now so basically I have done anything on the switch and I don't need to do anything because it usually comes with its you know default settings that's the VLAN one of course you're gonna go in details and create VLANs and stuff like that and if you want to know about VLAN just google what is VLAN I'm not gonna go into that right now I just wanna get router to give a connection to a switch the default I just turn it on and now if I own the switch and if I go to enable you see right here and if I do show interface show IP interface brief if I if you type that whoop, not brief brief and you can see the VLAN is already assigning an IP address to VLAN this one but what I need to do right now at this point this is connected to the machine the adapter right and you can see it's turned off so I'm gonna do is turn off my first adapter remember that dots it was on the Netgear address this is not even connected to the switch so I'm gonna disable that okay and you can see it's not connected to that so it's doing nothing right now so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and enable this you see it went down and now and there's something going on in the switch too so you can see the switch went up and this should be getting an IP address the one that we just assigned 192.2 two address not one we just took it off from one so you see the identifying thing is over it's getting a connection and there's no yellow sign or anything like that so what we need to do is to go to our CMD now and we'll type IP config and you're seeing that it's getting a dot two dot two address and the default gateway is 2.1 which is great right everything is coming from the router or the switch and it's getting a connection here but is it getting an internet connection so let's go to jobskillshare.org we're gonna enter it and there you go so guys what's the point of doing all of this this is for someone new to networking or IT even not even networking if you want to become just a normal IT person you should know basic stuff like this you might be working in a help desk environment just to get get to the switch and find out what IP is assigned to what port is it administratively down is this port I'm, I'm plugging this in there it's down why is it down so maybe if you know this you can go in there and say oh it is administratively down the networking person made it down so I can't do nothing at this one and I confirmed it I can send him a ticket and say hey this is administratively down can you make this port up and then they will just take it up and everything will be good so that's how you do this um, home lab with Cisco routers and switches thank you